Welcome to RoboSub 2012. This is where autonomous robot submarines come to strut their stuff. And you're gonna see a great competition here in San Diego this week. I'm Zoz Brooks, and once again, I'm here to give you the inside scoop on all the robot action in and out of the water. RoboSub is in its 15th year, so it's really one of our signature competitions. This is not just you get a project, you sit down by yourself and do some research and crank it out. You're doing your part, your teammates are doing their part. The complexity of these submarines is such that if 99% of it works right, you still got that 1% that can ruin the whole thing. They program it, they create parameters that it's supposed to understand and behave within, but there is no human control once the vehicle leaves the dock. First and foremost, you have to keep the water out. And then you need to be able to travel in a straight line, you need to maintain a depth. And then from there, you can add on different sensors to do the different tasks of the competition. The most that a team can do when they put it in the water is cross their fingers. Maybe shout. They do a lot of shouting. Presented by AUVSI Foundation and ONR, this is RoboSub 15, and it's the biggest RoboSub yet. Over 30 teams from 10 different countries are going to battle it out for $20,000 in cash prizes and the serious bragging rights you can only get from building a champion bot. It's a diverse field this year in every respect. We've got high schools mixing it up with universities and colleges, and all experience levels are represented. From first-time competitors to seasoned veterans. So anything could happen out there in the pool. And I'm the guy who'll be telling you about it all, so let's go find out about this year's course. It's a Roman theme, it's the Ides of Transdeck, as opposed to the Ides of March. And so there's a Roman gladiator theme to it, so you've got your uh, qualifying gate you have to pass through. It's the gate they have to pass through to make sure that they can submerge and go straight. And there are uh, buoys to touch, which is the uh, training arena. They can drive over a, a green obstacle, which is the obstacle course. They have uh, an array of bins to drop markers in, which have gladiator weapons in it. There's uh, circular cutouts in a window that you can fire torpedoes through, and that's the et tu brute task. Often the deep part of the pool is feed emperor grapes, and so that's a manipulation task. And then finally, there's an octagon that's floating on the surface, and below that there's a pinger, which has a laurel wreath PVC structure. And you can recover it, you can turn it to the surface, you can drop it, and you can replace it. The competition pool is part of the U.S. Navy's Spaywar Transdeck facility, and teams have spent their first couple of days here testing their robots under actual field conditions, and in some cases, repairing the damage suffered in transit to the site. Students can expect that a lot of things that worked perfectly well the week before they got here are going to all go wrong once they get here. We don't know why, but a lot of things just seem to go wrong once you've disassembled and reassembled the sub. They also needed to use that time to pre-qualify for the semi-final rounds by sending their robots through the start gate in order to demonstrate a minimum level of autonomous control. It's not just the robot's performance that's on the line, though. Yesterday, teams needed to put on presentations for the static judging, an important source of competition points. Yesterday and today, we had static judging, and that's where they come in and they present the fundamentals of the design. And this is where we get to see the strategy that they went about it, the engineering that went behind it, and essentially the craftsmanship of how they built the vehicle, not just how they performed inside the pool. Today was the first day of the semifinals round, and there's been plenty to report from the qualifying course. On Saturday, there's a second day of qualifying, and I'll be back here at the end of the day with another recap video to fill you in on what happened and who's got hold of one of those coveted final slots. Then on Sunday, it's the big event. I'll be talking you through every thrust and dive of the finals in a continuous streaming webcast from 1 p.m. Pacific time. So don't miss out on that finals action in real time. Register for the webcast right here at robosub.org. And if you happen to be in the San Diego area, this year I'm not just playing myself on TV, I'm playing myself on a Jumbotron. You'll be able to see everything the web viewers see above and below the surface, as well as talk to the teams and sponsors. So come hang out with us. If you can't make it down in person, you can still participate in the robotics community at robonation.org. One way or the other, I'll see you here on Saturday.